Imagine you are a hacker. You have just broken into a company's database. You see millions of user records and in the passwords column, instead of password 123, you see complete gibberish. Random strings like this. At first glance, it looks useless. But is it really? And this is where the real cat and mouse game begins. And it's exactly why Google, Amazon and every serious company follow strict playbooks for how passwords are stored. Let's dive in and see how this system actually works. Think of hashing like a blender. You throw in a banana, strawberries and milk, hit the button and get a smoothie. Now try getting the banana back. Impossible, right? And that's exactly what a hash function does with your password. It scrambles it into a unique fingerprint. Same input equals same output. But you can't go backward. For example, password 123 might result into this. And password 124 into this. One small change, completely different result. And that avalanche effect is what makes hashes so powerful. So at sign up, your password is hashed and the fingerprint is stored in the database. At login, the server rehashes your input and checks if it matches. Clean and simple. But here is where the hacker comes back into the story. Hackers know people reuse weak passwords. So they pre-compute giant list of common passwords and their hashes. These cheat sheets are called rainbow tables. So if the hacker sees hash like this, they just look it up. Oh, that's the password. Instant win. And this is exactly what happened in the LinkedIn breach of 2012. They were using unsalted SHA-1. 117 million passwords got cracked in no time. Clearly, plain hashing isn't enough. Enter salts. A salt is just a random string added to your password before hashing. Without salt, a password is directly converted to a hash like this. And with salt, say for example xyz at the rate 9, it looks like this. This way, even if two users pick the same password, their stored hashes are completely different. For example, on Facebook, if Alice and Bob both use password 123, without salt, their hashes would match. With salt, they are unique. Salt makes rainbow tables useless because the attacker would need to pre-compute hashes for every possible salt too, which is astronomically expensive. Google, Facebook, Amazon, they all salt passwords uniquely. It's a standard practice. But hackers don't give up. They can brute force with GPUs trying billions of guesses per second. So the defense has to slow them down. Enter adaptive hashing algorithms. Bcrypt is one of them. It's old, but still rock solid. Scrypt adds memory usage and is great against GPUs. Argento is the new champion, winner of the password hashing competition. And PBKDF2 uses AWS Cognito, which is still reliable with enough iterations. What makes them powerful is their cost factor. You can tune how slow they are. For example, Bcrypt with 12 rounds might take 100 milliseconds to hash one password. That's nothing for a user logging in, but a nightmare for an attacker's trying billions. This is why OWASP, the security rulebook, explicitly recommends Argon to ID or Bcrypt with a high work factor. They want to make brute force impractical. Some companies go further. They add a pepper, a secret value stored outside the database maybe in a hardware security module. So the formula becomes like this. Even if the database leaks, without the pepper, the hashes are harder to crack. Think of it as an extra lock on the vault. Google and Amazon both mentioned peppering in their security guidelines. Now, if you're wondering, how do companies decide what security is enough? The answer is often OWASP. OWASP publishes cheat sheets on authentication and password storage. They are like the referee in this security game. Their rules, never store plain text passwords, always use unique salts, use adaptive algorithms, and assume your database will get stolen one day. Remember the LinkedIn hack? That was the old world. Now look at Google. They hash passwords with salt, run them through slow algorithms, and sometimes add peppers. On top of that, they encourage two-factor authentication, and now even push passkeys. Amazon's Cognito goes further using SRP, or Security Remote Password Protocol. They don't even store passwords, just a verifier derived from password plus salt. That way, even if Cognito's database leaks, attackers don't get usable password data. For example, here in this code, notice they both generate a salt and make brute force painfully slow. All this complexity exists 
because we still use passwords. But Big Tech is now saying, maybe we don't need them at all. Enter passkeys. Passkeys use public key cryptography. Your device holds a private key, the server holds a matching public key, and when you log in, your device signs a challenge. The server verifies it. No password to steal, no hash to crack, no rainbow tables, and no database full of juicy secrets. Apple, Google, Microsoft are all rolling out passkeys under the Fido2 or WebAuthn standard. And yes, Amazon is testing passwordless logins too. It's not just theory, it's the future. So let's recap. Hashes make passwords one way. Salts make them unique. Adaptive algorithms make them slow for hackers. Peppers add extra protection. OWASPs write the rules. And passkeys might make all of these obsolete one day. At the end of the day, password security isn't about making it impossible for hackers. It's about making it so impractical, they move on. And that's how your database keeps passwords secure, until we finally leave passwords behind. If you found this breakdown helpful, don't stop here. I've made a dedicated video on passkeys, how they work, why Google, Apple, and Amazon are pushing them, and whether they are finally killing passwords for good. And hey, if you enjoyed this deep dive, hit subscribe so you don't miss future videos where we make complex tech simple. Until next time, stay curious, stay secure.